Blessed are you, Sovereign God of all, to you be praise and glory forever. In your tender compassion, the dawn from on high is breaking upon us, to dispel the lingering shadows of night. As we look for your coming among us this day, open our eyes to behold your presence, and strengthen our hands to do your will, that the world may rejoice and give you praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. We read together Psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength, an ever-present help in trouble. Therefore we will not fear, though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her, she will not fall. God will help her at the break of day. Nations are in uproar, kingdoms fall. He lifts his voice, the earth melts. The Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Come and see what the Lord has done, the desolations he has brought on the earth. He makes wars to cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shields with fire. He says, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. God is our refuge and strength an ever present help in trouble. When the uh, waters surge, when the world is in chaos, God is still our help. Psalm 95 Come, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before him with thanksgiving and extol him with music and song. For the Lord is the great God, the great King above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth and the mountain peaks belong to him. The sea is his, for he made it and his hands form the dry land. Come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, the flock under his care. Today, if you would hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as you did at Melbar, and as you did at Massa in the wilderness, where your ancestors tested me. They tried me, though they had seen what I did. For forty years I was angry with that generation. I said they are a people whose hearts go astray, and they have not known my ways. So I declared on oath my anger, they shall never enter my rest. Let's not be like those people who saw all of God's mercy, and saw God's deliverance, and yet still tested him, still didn't believe these promises. We've seen God do so much in our lives. Let's worship and bow down and give him glory. Let's believe that we are his people, the flock under his care, and trust him to lead us. Psalm, uh, Isaiah chapter 54. Sing, barren woman, you who never bore a child. Burst into song and shout for joy, you who were never in labour. Because more are the children of the desolate woman than of her who has a husband says the Lord. Enlarge the place of your tent. Stretch your tent curtains wide. Do not hold back. Lengthen your cords. Strengthen your stakes. For you will spread out to the right and to the left. Your descendants will dispossess nations and settle in their desolate cities. Do not be afraid. You will not be put to shame. Do not fear disgrace. You will not be humiliated. Do not forget the shame of your youth. And remember no more the reproach of your widowhood. For your maker is your husband. The Lord Almighty is his name. The Holy One of Israel is your Redeemer. He is called the God of all the earth. The Lord will call you back. As if you were a wife deserted and distressed in spirit. A wife who married young only to be rejected, says your God. For a brief moment I abandoned you. But with deep compassion I will bring you back. In a surge of anger, I hid my face from you for a moment, but with everlasting kindness, I will have compassion on you, says the Lord your Redeemer. 
To me, this is like the days of Noah, when I swore that the waters of Noah would never again cover the earth. So now I have sworn not to be angry with you, never to rebuke you again, though the mountains be shaken and the hills be removed. Yet my unfailing love for you will not be shaken, nor my covenant of peace be removed, says the Lord who has compassion on you. Afflicted city, lashed by storms and not comforted, I will rebuild you with stones of turquoise, your foundations with lapis lazuli. I will make your battlements of rubies, your gates of sparkling jewels, and all your walls of precious stone. All your children will be taught by the Lord, and great will be their peace. In righteousness you will be established. Tyranny will be far from you. You will have nothing to fear. Terror will be far removed. It will not come near you. If anyone does attack you, it will not be my doing. Whoever attacks you will surrender to you. See, I have created the blacksmith who fans the coals into flame and forges a weapon fit for its work. And it is I who have created the destroyer to wreak havoc. No weapon forged against you will prevail and you will refruit every tongue that accuses you. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord and this is their vindication from me, declares the Lord. God calling back the people who he had punished and calling them to be faithful to him because faithfulness to him um, and he would be faithful to them. Let's make sure we are those who live faithfully before him so that we may enjoy his faithfulness and his protection and his power. Second Peter chapter 1 verse 16 we're going to read right into chapter 2 and verse 3. For we did not follow cleverly devised stories when we told you about the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ in power, but we were eyewitnesses of his majesty. He received honour and glory from God the Father when the voice came to him from the majestic glory, saying, This is my Son, whom I love, with him I am well pleased. We ourselves heard this voice that came from heaven when we were with him on the sacred mountain. We also have the prophetic message as something completely reliable and you will do well to pay attention to it as to a light shining in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. Above all, you must understand that no prophecy of scripture came about by the prophet's own interpretation of things. For prophecy never had its origin in human will, but prophets, though human, spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. But there were also false prophets among the people, just as there will be false teachers among you. They will secretly introduce destructive heresies, even denying the sovereign Lord who brought, who brought them, bringing swift destruction on themselves. Many will follow their depraved conduct and will bring the way of truth into disrepute. In their greed, these teachers will exploit you with fabricated stories. Their condemnation has been long hanging over them and their destruction has not been sleeping. Well, well, we must make sure that we give good attention to the word of God as proclaimed by faithful men and women who, who are carried along and moved by the Holy Spirit in line with the scriptures. We also must critically analyze that which we hear because there are false prophets who will come into the church and spread destructive heresies. We must make sure that we know the difference between the two. Part of it will be their conduct. Does their conduct bring the way of truth into disrepute or does it bring glory to God? Let's make sure we are those who live in such a way that our conduct brings glory to God. Our Father, we pray that you will prosper your people today, that we may bless your name and give you glory. Lord, we pray that the way that we conduct ourselves and live will be honouring to you. And Lord, will not bring the gospel into disrepute, but will bring honour and glory to your name. Lord, we lift up our members, uh, Ron and Pauline Cole, uh, and Samson and Rachel. And Lord, we thank you for them. Lord, we thank you for their love for you and their commitment to your work. We thank you for their frequent trips to Nigeria. And pray, Lord, that you will prosper their hand and, Lord, use them mightily 
uh, in the training of ministers in that land. And Lord, we thank you too for the uh, ministry of Michael and Linda Banfield when they were among us. And Lord, we pray that you will bless them in their retirements and in their continued ministries. Lord, we thank you for their love for you, their seal for you, and the wisdom and humanity they uh, brought into our fellowship and church. Lord, we give you thanks for these people, your servants. And so, Lord, we commit to you this day and pray, Lord, that you will move mightily in our hearts and lives. God, our Redeemer, who prepared Mary to be the mother of your son, grant that as she look for his coming as our saviour, so we may be ready to greet him when he comes again as our judge, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. <laughs>